Hey y'all, CB here at NBS Welding, coming at you from the shop right now. Let me show you what we got coming up next, some stuff we're going to be messing with. This is a 1 by 3 16 galvanized serrated bar grating. So it's galvanized, that means it's been hot dip galvanized. Hot dip galvanized, this has been dipped in a vat of molten zinc at 850 degrees in one of the best corrosion protection systems that you can get for steel. Uh, serrated meaning it's got them little doodabbies chipped out of the top of it, so it's got real good traction. And in one by three sixteenths means it's one inch tall, it's three sixteenths inch thick. That's the bars it's made out of. Now, what we're doing with that, basically all I've got to do is cut it to length, which would make a pretty boring video. But it's not a boring job, because what we've got going on is, uh, my buddy's decided to build his own drainage grate, which the great, uh, the, the, the drainage system will be, I'll be doing the grate, but he's been, he's decided to build his own forms for his drainage system, which he's basically building his own draining troughs out of concrete. And we're going to go check that out. Now, the situation being that he's shopped around, he's looked at, you know, you can buy different plastic and fiberglass uh, drainage troughs to put in your concrete. Now, this would be like maybe in front of your garage or, in his case, in front of the building where he plans on putting his camper. Um He's looked at what's available, and he's decided he wanted to build his own, and he's got an idea that pretty much came from another buddy of ours who is a boss man for a local construction company that he talked to, and they have already built forms and done drainage systems just like what my buddy's doing. But the difference is the forms that that company has used and the ones that we've seen that they've put in – is just too big for the application my buddy's got. So he's taken their idea and scaled it down. Now, about everywhere we've been recently, we took a super service truck. If you follow my channel, you're familiar with super service truck. Uh, ain't took the old brick nose dually nowhere for a while. So we got to see if, uh, if we can fire that thing up because I'm feeling like taking that up there to look at this job. On the scene look here so what he did they had a jackhammer on hoe they they cut this concrete that was already poured get my shadow in your way cut out the concrete and 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 took a jackhammer on a excavator and busted it up Pulled it out of there with the thumb. And this is the form that he made. He's got set in place. And what this is going to make that's going to be so nice, it's, it's going to make a concrete trough that you could just take a spade shovel and shovel right out. And right here, you ought to be able to smell what we're stepping in. This is the form. He's got a six inch PVC that's been cut in half. He's taken these two befores. He's removed just enough wood right here to fit that half a pipe in 
So you got a nice smooth area right here. And then this board, see, that's going to make the ledge that your grating's going to set on. If you see what we're, see what we're talking about here, the grating would set right across the, right across the opening like that. This is how much bearing you've got for your grating to set. So they'll be pouring this full of concrete uh and probably sticking the vibrator down in it and vibrating it and then once it's all set this form pops out of there you're going to end up with concrete where you can just you know take it's going to be nice and round in the bottom which would be really nice you can take your take a spade shovel or a uh you know, a trench shovel and just clean it out when you need to. And we'll be cutting bar grading. I think what he's got from right here to right here, he said, was nine and a half inches. And it's probably an important part of this to see these. He's got these on here. And that's holding the width of that because this would, this would flex, you know, and it could be wrong. So I think he, like he's got these cut nine and a half inches long exactly so that if you got uh, that flush to the back of there, it's going to maintain the width of the thing. So you're even all the way across there. And then we'll be cutting the bar grating nine inches long so, you know, you don't have to beat it in there with a hammer. There's no sense of making it too tight. But this is one of the things where uh, the metal part of this that, that I got to do as far as cutting the bar grating... Um, not too exciting, but now if you wanted to make your own trench, drainage trench like this, this is a really good idea. Uh, and you can see in his situation, he's going to be dealing with whatever water's coming down here. And this is water that he don't want going in his building. We just stand here talking about this, and you might have seen them rods a minute ago if you were paying attention, but I, I didn't really I didn't really focus on it. If you're doing something like this, so Brian was just saying, you gotta rod this. What this is gonna do, see, once he cut this concrete, he drilled the hole and put these rods in here where you got I think he's got four or five inches of rod sticking out for for this is gonna be set in the concrete here, but he was just saying how if you don't do this, you know, your other concrete right here, it needs these rods to hold it. You got heating up and cooling down and, and water and freezing and thawing. These won't stay level if they're not rotted like this. You know, you have a piece of concrete that hooves up or sinks down or whatever. And I didn't say anything about that when I was filming there earlier. How far apart are these, Brian? Every two foot. So there's a rod every two foot. And um, this would be like once you get it cut open and get your concrete pulled out, you just hammer drill in there and, and stick them rods in there. All right, so we've been out on the job and we got our measurement knowing uh, what size we're going to cut the grating. Uh, first thing is going to be uh, getting it in a position to cut. And for that, we're going to need the shyster. So let's build a fire in the old shyster, and we'll get our grating moved around and set up on some jacks where we can do some work.
So there's a few things that you need to consider when you're fabricating grates with this bar grating. If you know all about all of those different things, then go ahead and watch something else. But if you don't, you might want to listen up. So when we look at our grating here, we can see that the uh, first thing you want to pay attention to when you're going to use this uh, for a grating something like a bearing load in the situation where we're using it in is which direction you know you're going to put it in there so we're going to have it where it we're going to want to cut this down through here and this grating is going to want to go uh we're going to want it to go across this way and the reason i say that is you want to drive over this this way where the strength of the bars will hold up the vehicles if you tried to drive over this bar grating in this direction, it has no strength. These rods will not support uh, your camper or your pickup. Uh, if, you, if you have it bearing here and bearing over there and you drive across this, you're going to bend it. Uh, you need it bearing here and bearing over here and drive across it this way So you're using the strength of the bars not the rods. So that's the first thing to consider. The next thing is uh, We know that we want our grading nine inches We've been to the job we measured, you know, we want nine inches. Well, here's the thing uh, the way these bars are if you just start marking nine inches and cutting you're going to have a whole bunch of different completely different uh, configurations of grading if you want your grading to all be the same where you're looking at a row of it and all these rods are fairly close to lining up you're probably going to have to do some extra cutting see if you can see where i took the saw and i made a cut across here and uh, squared it up a little bit and we're looking at our nine inches right here. And you can, if, if you, you see what I did, this nine inch uh, piece of grating, when I cut it, is going to include three bars with this bar right in the center. Now, if we, if we then start right here and just cut another one that's nine inches, well, we're only going to have two of these round bars in our 9-inch grate. This is going to be real long, and then over here we'd be real short. That's not symmetrical. It wouldn't look good, and it's not as strong. Uh, since we got to decide how we're going to do this, uh, we're looking at the fact that if I cut this the 9 inches right here, and I go... A half inch past this rod and a half inch past that rod that includes three rods instead of two that means I'm gonna to have to cut this an extra cut right here again a half inch from that rod and then a half inch from this rod and then this piece of grating and that piece of grating will be the same so that's one thing you might have to do some extra cuts on this material to make it so that your grates are the same uh, and another thing, this is something that is, what's really common with bar grading is, is a practice that fabricators do called banding. And banding, bar grading, would be when you uh, cut your grading and then you also cut a flat bar that's the same height as your grading and you weld it to the grating like this. That's what banding the bar grading is. Uh, it does a few things. One thing it does is it straightens up the grating. Uh, you might notice if you look at this grating right here, because in this direction right here, we're only the only strength we got is those round bars. Uh, it's not so stiff that it's perfectly straight. I actually I can see a little bit of a bow in it right there. Um, now, if you put if if you band your bar grating like you take this piece of uh, quarter by one flat bar and you line it up perfect against this edge and, and you weld it on there that's going to make that perfectly straight there's also uh, a considerable uh, strength gain by doing that meaning that if you was to pull one of these grates up out of here and you dropped it on the corner 
it would be harder to knock it out of square or bend it if it was banded like that. Uh, if you're doing a job where you decide that you need to band your bar grating, then you got to decide how to weld it, and there's a couple things to consider on that. If you put this grating up here, and you just stitch weld it here and there, uh, something that I've seen uh, and done on a lot of jobs is to put it up there and take a 7018 rod and just put one really good tack at the top and one really good tack at the bottom. That would be a faster way to make it a little bit better by banding, but not as good as welding it all the way up. Uh, and the huge drawback to doing that is if you put a, if you put this up here and you just tack the top and the bottom, then in between those two pieces of flat bar where you didn't weld it solid, there's going to be a place where you have the end of this grating touching this flat bar where water can get in behind there and you can't ever clean that out. You can't ever get paint back in there and it's always going to leach a little bit of rust. So if, if, if maximum corrosion protection is something you're concerned about and you have to band your grating, then you got to put this grating up there and you got to weld all the way around it completely solid so that water can't get in behind those two flat bars and 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 make that rust uh so is there a is there a reason why you wouldn't band your bar grating every time well one thing is you can save a whole lot of work and a, and a little bit of flat bar by not putting a, a band on it at all if like in this case i'm pretty sure since this is only a nine inch piece that we're doing and i can cut them so that we can have three round bars and this is not a majorly industrial application this is not going to be driven across day after day after day after day. It's going to be driven across occasionally, and that's about it. Uh, I believe that with, with my buddy having two inches of bearing surface here and two inches of bearing surface here and three of these bars, I think it's worth a try to put these grates in there without banding them at all. And is there any advantage to that? Yes there's a couple advantages to it one i can put cold galvanizing compound on the end of this galvanized grating where uh, where i've cut it and we'll get very little rusting uh it, it is going to be really good for corrosion resistance to not have to heat this galvanized steel and burn the zinc off of it and not worry about having to you know paint a mild steel bar grating uh, to try to keep the end of it from rusting and all that stuff so that's one thing and another thing worth considering if we think that we can get away without banding the grating is in an application like at my buddy's place where there's going to be water coming down the hill and going into this trough uh, if that bar, if that uh, bar grating is banded and you got your flat bar right here, you have an extra blocking piece that's going to catch debris. So your grass clippings, your leaves, uh, pine needles, they're all going to build up and get stopped up a lot worse right here where this flat bar is like a, you know, like a dozer blade sitting there catching all that crap. So, there's no perfect way to do everything. you got to decide what you're going to do based on what you know and go from there. And based on what I know and I think is worth a, sh a shot on this deal, uh, I think we're going to have enough strength for two reasons. One, we're going to have three bars going across. So, the three round bars, I think... Uh, is helpful instead of just having two another thing is nine inches is not that big you know this is going to gain a lot of strength just by the fact that it's not much of a span and uh, 
I don't know if I mentioned it, but one of the things that the the banding does is if you weld a band on here, it'll keep these flat bars from getting tweaked. But in this case, this round bar that's connected to the grating is only going to be a half an inch from the edge. So I really don't see a whole lot of twisting going on, especially since, like I said, this isn't a massively industrial application. You're not going to have skid steers and, and things that have massive amounts of weight per square inch turning and twisting on these bars all the time. If that's the case, boy, you better band your stuff. You know, if you're... If it's at a at a shop or somewhere industrial, you better band it. You better weld it good. You know, in, in this case, he's going to drive his his pickup with his camper. You know, maybe ATVs and things in and out of there. We're not talking about a lot of weight. We're not talking about something that's getting on top of the bars and really twisting on it. You're not going to have that. So, our plan now is to go just uh you know it's working out to be to get nine inches like i showed you when i had my tape measure up here it's from the center of that bar to there is about a half inch center of that bar to there about a half inch and that makes us where we got our nine inch uh grading and one of the things about cutting this stuff well there's a few things to consider on it um it's it's not real easy to mark with a really accurate mark and uh when i cut it with my milwaukee metal cutter saw i use this circular saw type saw low rpm tungsten carbide teeth metal cutter when i use it usually what i'll do is i will look at the fence on the saw here and I'll find out if you look at my if you look at my fence on my Milwaukee saw, I can tell you my blade is right where this notch is. So I know where my blade's at. The next thing I'll work out is which one of these other little notches, and sometimes I'll make a mark on here with a marker if I need to. But I'll work out which one of these little notches that I'm gonna put in the center of the of the rod and I'll basically be following that round bar rod with a certain part of the fence of my blade and in this case there's a part of the there's a black mark I don't know if you can see that I've got a black mark right there on this fence that is just the right distance from the edge that'll put my blade where I can uh, follow that round bar and make my cut. My blade, my saw blade will be out here the half inch away and make my cut. So what I'll do is I'll run that saw this direction and make one cut. And then I'm going to come around here in this direction, line that same part of the blade or that same part of the fence up with my round bar. And I'll go right down through there and make the other cut. Okay. Now, that being said, there's another thing that often happens when you cut this bar grating with that type of saw that can be a real hassle is it'll bind. Meaning that once you start cutting and you get out through here a little ways, this grating sometimes will squeeze on your saw blade that's sticking down below there. And that turns into a real hassle. Uh there's you can use a welder's wedge sometimes to drive in between the ones that you've already cut or use some method that spreads that open a lot of times that'll help you get the rest of your cut made um, you could also in a real extreme situation since you're going to be you're, we're going to be wasting this much flat bar anyway uh, if it helps you you could just take your oxyacetylene torch and just hack this off to get this piece of grating separated and then take your saw and make the cut where the flat bars will just fall off like that. If you did that, there wouldn't be any binding. Uh, I'm not going to do that, and I don't think I'm going to need to, and here's the reason why. I think since we're only going 9 inches here, 
this nine inches is not going to have so much power that it's going to put a major bind on my saw blade. I just don't see that happening. It may happen, but I'm kind of doubting it. I think that since that's only nine inches, as I go down through there, I just don't think it, the binding is going to be that bad. I think when the binding is the worst is when you're cutting one of these that's like four feet. Like if you, if you take that saw blade and you have to go right here and make a cut, uh, you know, there's forces where this was all welded together by resistance when they manufactured the product. There's stresses in it that are going to be released because you're cutting it. And then some, and that's another thing too. It's not predictable. Sometimes it'll squeeze your blade. Sometimes it won't. But that's a few things I want to mention about uh, the manner in which you want to fabricate with this stuff. And let's get to work. See how this goes. Cut speed on that saw slowed down a bunch, making all them cuts, but I made it on one blade. That blade's pretty much trash now, but it did a good job. Uh, at one point, that saw got so hot, I had to put my gloves on just to touch it, so I had to take a break. Uh, went and got me a drink of water. A couple of things, I guess, uh, you may notice. I don't know if you noticed or not, but as I was cutting them, when I would catch it and i had it in my hand i set it on a pallet now i've worked in a lot of shops where they had plenty of pallets and plenty of forklifts and a guy would cut a part like that and he'd throw it on the ground and a little bit later he'd have a whole mess of these things laying all over on the ground ain't no sense in that you know the extra time it takes to pick that stuff up you know, I'd see guys pick that stuff up and then put it on the forks of a forklift. Well, now what are you going to do with it? If you need the forklift, you got a forklift full of stuff. There's nothing, you know, you got to unload it to, to do something else with a forklift. It's very common in an industrial setting to have pallets around. If you got something in your hand you just cut off, you put it on a pallet. You got a bunch of them, you pile them up on a pallet. Whenever you get to a point that you need to move it, you go over there with the forklift, you take it anywhere you need to take it, and if you need the forklift for something else, you set the whole pallet down, you go use the forklift for something else. Use your head. Uh, now, the thing we got here uh, to deal with now is a whole bunch of metal on the ground, a bunch of little pieces of flat bar, and that will recycle. Um, thing is, you got to pick it up. So... I have a magnet on wheels. If you got a shop where you do much stuff like this or you're a contractor that deals with nails or metal, you should probably get one of them. I think the one I got come from Lowe's, there's plenty of places you can get them. But that's going to be the next thing is cleaning that up. And uh, actually, since this will recycle, I'll be putting it in the scrap bin. Of course, me and the neighbor boys here, we call the scrap bin the piggy bank. Uh... And rather than, since I have a forklift here, it wouldn't make any sense to pick that up and put it in something else and then put it in the scrap bin. I'm going to pick up the scrap bin, and I'm going to carry the scrap bin over here. I'm going to get my roller magnet, and I'm going to clean this up. And as soon as it comes off the magnet, it's going in the piggy bank. 
That's up next. Let's go. Just figured I'd show you real quick what the way that saw leaves a burr. The burr's mostly on this this side to the right. So that's the reason I'm running this file on here. I can run the file on here going down the right side pretty quick and uh, flip it over and do the other end the uh, same way. And uh, it takes that burr off air, and I'm, one of the things I'm trying not to do, uh, it's good to use a file instead of a grinder if the file will do it in a reasonable amount of time because I don't want to heat this. Uh, the more you heat this, the more likely you're going to have issues with rust and corrosion. So um, hitting it with a file, and then I'll be ready to put a ZRC cold galvanizing compound on it. And... Um, that's about the best that, that we could expect to do, uh, you know, for corrosion protection is uh, a ZRC cold galvanizing compound is a very high zinc, uh, about as close as I can get to, to the hot dip galvanizing that's on the rest of this material. We're going to use it to treat the cut end, which is obviously not galvanized because we cut it. Um, if money were no object, and it was a job uh, worth the expense, you would cut these grates uh, out of a bare grating and do whatever was going to be done to them, either file them, grind them, weld bands on them or whatever, and then afterwards you'd send them off and have them hot dip galvanized, and then the whole, you know, the whole grate would be hot dip galvanized. It's, it's definitely not, uh, this is not a job where it's worth that sort of an expense and actually uh we don't have a galvanizer in west virginia anymore we had one in polka and they shut down i think the closest one now is kentucky so if you wanted to hot dip galvanize something uh it wouldn't be cheap i mean just the trucking would be a big issue but we're going to do the best we can with cleaning up with a file and coating it with a zrc cold galvanizing compound and, and it's going to do a good job Got one coat of ZRC on them babies, and um, I got a pink ribbon right here because when I was working on them, I found one of these is broke. That's unfortunate. Um, but I have seen bar grading where the resistance welds like that have broke before. Uh, I guess it happens. It's 
it's one of them things at this point in the fabrication, uh, you know, you ain't going to try and send it back. We just got to deal with it. And, you know, we only need about 17 and one third of these pieces and we've got 18. And I know there's going to be one that gets cut. That's why I marked out with that pink ribbon. So when it comes time that we got to cut one, I can deal with that being broke by cutting that one off. That will be the one we'll cut, and then that's going to take care of the problem. Like I said, sometimes with material, if it's possible for you to work around things and, and not uh, hurt the quality of your job, then, you know, that's what I'm going to do. It's sort of like... Uh, with steel you really shouldn't run into that that much but i guess from time to time you do and uh sort of like you know working with two befores you, you might get a two before that's got a huge knot in it and it ain't no good but if it, it you know there might be one two by four that you only need to three foot long if you can cut the bad part off and get your job done go on with life you know fuss and worry and piss and moan about something else uh we're gonna live with it uh, I'll be putting a second coat on these now. I've given them about an hour uh, since I put the first coat on. So we'll just be doing the reverse of what we did the first time. Now, the ZRC cold galvanizing compound, uh, it's in the refrigerator. I took the roller and the roller tray that I was using. I put it in a... Uh, uh, a repurposed uh, Ziploc bag is actually one of the bags that my tilapia fish comes in, but it had a zipper top on it like a Ziploc, so I was able to put the roller handle and the and the tray in that zipper bag and zip it shut and put it in the refrigerator. That keep it from drying out. That ZRC is a very expensive product. Uh, it's the best cold galvanizing compound that I personally have ever used, uh, but it's expensive and one of the things that's really shocking about it is how much it weighs um, I might be wrong because it's been a while since I threw away the whole one gallon jug a lot of times like when I open a one gallon container I will uh, use whatever I'm using and uh, if there's an amount left I might put it in a different container actually the ZRC I've got right now is in a uh, I think it's a spaghetti sauce container and what I'll do is uh, I will put it in some kind of a container like that and a lot of times I'll store it upside down where if there is any chance that the cap might leak then the product will seal that leak shut and air can't get in the container uh, but like I say, I was going to tell you about how much heavier that is. The ZRC, it's zinc. You know, it's liquid metal. Um, I'm, I might be wrong, but I'm thinking it's about 22 pounds a gallon. It's very heavy. When you grab a gallon of it, it's surprising. But uh, any hooser, time for the second coat on these things. grading on the old brick nose dually and my buddy wants to borrow the car trailer so I'm gonna run it up there with me we're gonna go set some grates there was that very uh, there was kind of a test that got done this very very last form right here and you can see what happened it didn't go too good he pulled that in five hours And luckily, you know, it was just a piece that was 
a couple three feet long right there. Now, the rest of it is great. Uh, and he ended up waiting two days to pull the rest. Now, he's got some pop marks and stuff they're going to fix with hydraulic cement, but over overall, for being, uh, you know, down in the ditch, and concrete guys, if, you know, if you're a concrete guy, you could pull these forms, pull them at the right time, and you could you could rub this right away, and you could make this all perfect. Uh, he wasn't worried about taking it to that extreme just to watch dirt and water flow out the driveway. But uh, it turned out, you know, for this is what he wanted. It's the thing. Just what he wanted, and, and the entire drain's all concrete. So we'll see if we can set some grates in it. MBS welding on the front, American flag on the sleeve, great big MBS welding here on the back, helps the channel if you buy a t-shirt, if you're interested in a t-shirt, send Tina an email request, uh, mbswelding at aol.com. Thank you.